similar objects and scale diagrams. So what do, we, what do we mean by similar objects? Well, a similar object is really just an object that has the exact same shape, but is either an enlargement or a reduction in the size of the other object. So check this out. I got two objects down here, two rectangles. I got a little one, and I got a big one. And these are similar objects. How do I know? Well, I can look at this big one, and they will be a similar object if the scale factor, which is the number that has been multiplied to make this bigger one compared to this one, if it's always the same. So this is a rectangle. So if this is 5, then down here in the bottom is going to be 5. And if this is 2 centimeters on this side, that's 2 centimeters. So if this is 10, this is 10 centimeters. And if this is 4 centimeters, this is 4 centimeters. Let's draw that again there. 10 centimeters. So yeah, so how can I figure out what the scale factor is? If I take this number here, so these sides correspond. This side and this side are, are the similar sides. So if I just simply go 10 divided by 5, I get 2. And so I know that this thing is 2 times bigger. Well, let's see. So if, if these are similar objects, then when I times this by 2, I better get 10. I times that by 2, I better get 10. Good. If I multiply this side by 2, I better get 2 times 2 is 4. Good. And if I multiply this side by 2, I better get 2 times 2 is 4 as well. So I know this is a similar, these are similar objects because when I multiplied all of these sides by the scale factor, which was 2, I got the exact uh, correct answers on each of the corresponding sides. So the scale factor is a number that's multiplied to all of the sides of an object to get the measure of the sides of the similar object. Now if the scale factor, the number you're multiplying, is more than 1, then it'll be an enlargement, such as this. And if the scale factor is something less than 1, it'll be a reduction, such as this. So let's see if we can find out what the scale factor is for this enlargement. So I just got to find two sides that I can compare. I'm going to pick these two right here. Let's get a different color here. So I'm going to pick this side and I'm going to pick this side. And so if I go 12 divided by 6, that gives me 2. So that must mean this triangle here supposedly is 2 times bigger. Well, if I take this side and multiply it by 2, good, I get 12. And if I take this side and multiply it by 2, good, I get 16. So the scale factor here would be a scale factor of 2. So 2 times bigger. That would be an enlargement. We could also get a reduction. And so what happened here? It what did we multiply these things by? Well, we could say, looks like we have divided them by 3, because 6 has become a 2. So let's see, if I divide that by 3, I get 2. If I divide that by 3, I get 2. And if I take 8 divided by 3, maybe you just want to confirm that on a calculator. 8 divided by 3 is, yeah, rounds to about 2.7. So then I know that here, the scale factor is one-third because I am multiplying each of these sides by one-third, which is, of course, the same thing as dividing by three. Now, we can write scale factors as either numbers, just like we've done here, or we could call them percents. So remember, two is the same thing as 200%. 200% would mean twice as big. Um, the one-third, if I wanted, I could write that as a decimal. 1 divided by 3, so 0.33333. And of course, going from a decimal to a percent, multiply it by 100, so about 33.3%. These would be three different ways you could write scale factors, fractions, decimals, or percents.
So let's look at a few other examples. Okay, John drew a scale diagram of his swimming pool. Got a backyard pool. He says the scale that he used was 1 to 200. What are the actual dimensions of the pool? Well, when you see this, 1 to 200, this means one unit on the map, or on the drawing, is equal to 200 in real life, or the, actu the actual thing. So really what this is saying is the scale factor is 200. The real pool is 200 times bigger than the drawing. So, if I want to know how big the real pool is, let's call this the length of the pool, and we'll call this the width of the pool. So the length of the pool should be 5 times 200, which is 1,000 centimeters, and the width of the pool should be 3 times 200, or 600 centimeters. And we probably wouldn't measure the length of a pool in centimeters, so we'll divide by 100 here to get 10 meters, and divide this by 100 to get 6 meters. So we can tell from his scale drawing, scale diagram there, that the actual dimensions of the pool are 10 meters by 6 meters. So now let's let's look at an interesting scenario here. What what would happen to the area of a shape? So I've got a couple of rectangles here. If we were to double the length. So let's let's do this here. Let's say this was Oh, let's call this um, 5 centimeters and call this 3 centimeters. So if we were to double the length, so go with a scale factor of 2, so we're going to make our scale factor equal to 2, and let's, let's call that k, so k equals 2. k is our multiplying factor, so we're going to multiply by 2. Our scale factor is 2. So this side is now 10 centimeters, and this side is 6 centimeters. And I've, I've actually made this, this rectangle here um, twice as big as this one. But when we look at the area, it looks like the area of this rectangle is much, much bigger than just twice the area of this rectangle. In fact, it kind of looks like I might even be able to fit four of these things in here, like so. And, of course, we know how to find the area of a rectangle. That's, that's length times width. So 5 times 3, the area of this rectangle is 15 centimeters squared. 5 times 3, 15. If we were doing this one, the area of this rectangle would be 60 centimeters squared. And if we do go 60 divided by 15, we do get, so if our scale, scale factor is 2, the area is four times bigger. And of course, maybe that's not a big surprise, because if we're doubling this side to get 10, and we also double this size to get side to get 6, we've actually done doubling twice. We've doubled this, and we've doubled this, which means our area should be four times bigger. So if you are doing a scale factor of 2 and you're just measuring a length, you will just simply double it. But if you wanted to know how much bigger is the area going to be if you use a scale factor of 2, you will have to go k squared. You will have to actually multiply by the scale factor twice. I'll show you a couple examples like that. Okay, we got a rectangle that has a length of 2 centimeters and a width of 3 centimeters. We're going to make a, a new rectangle that has a scale factor of 5. So we've got a length of 2 and a width of 3. So it might look like this, 2 centimeters by 3 centimeters. But there's going to be another one that's 5 times bigger. So just roughly, if I times this by 5, I'm going to get 10 centimeters. And if I times this by 5, I'm going to get 15 centimeters. But really, I don't even have to, to draw these. If I know 
that this new rectangle has a scale factor of 5, and I want to figure out how much bigger is the area, well, if this side got multiplied by 5 and this side got multiplied by 5, then the area is going to be 25 times bigger than this one. So, scale factor of 5, each side length is going to be 5 times longer, but the area is going to be 5 times 5 times bigger. Here's a, a circle question. A circle has a radius of 12, so you can imagine a circle with a radius of 12. And so this circle would have a certain, a certain area. There's going to be a new circle that has a radius of 3. three centimeters. So I can tell then that the scale factor of this one is going to be one-fourth because if I take 12 and I divide it by 4 I would get 3. So my scale factor is one-fourth. So for the area that must mean it was reduced by one-fourth times another one-fourth because area is always squared units. So there's two dimensions that have been reduced here, which means that the area of this is 1 16th the area of the big circle that we started with. Now we could, we could see how this affects the volume of an object. So now I've got a couple of boxes here. This one's 3 centimeters by 4 centimeters by 2 centimeters. This one's 6 centimeters by 8 centimeters by 4 centimeters. So we can say that the scale factor is 2. So the scale factor is 2 because this is doubled, this is doubled, this is doubled. But what would happen to the volume? Well, we know that volume is length times width times height. And so 3 times 4 is 12, 12 times 2. This would have a volume of 24 centimeters cubed. This one would have a volume of 6 times 8, 48. 48 times 4 is 192. And if we want to see how, uh, how the volume of this big one compares with the volume of the little one, Let's divide them, and we get that the volume is 8 times bigger. And that shouldn't be a surprise to you because we've just doubled this to 6, we doubled that to 8, and we've doubled that to 4. So three dimensions have been doubled. So the scale factor was 2, that happened three times. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So if ever you have a three-dimensional object, three dimensions, and you want to find how much bigger the volume is, you need to multiply the scale factor three times because you have three different dimensions that have been enlarged. So just to summarize then, if you have something that has a scale factor of 3, then what that means is that the length of every side would be increased by a factor of 3, not increased by 3, increased by a factor of 3. Let's change that. Okay, so if the scale factor was 3, then that means the length is increased by a factor of 3. All the sides of your object would be 3 times bigger. The area then would be increased by 3 times 3, or 3 squared is another way of writing that, or 9, 3 times 3 or 3 squared is 9. So the area would actually be 9 times bigger because there's two dimensions that have been increased. And if you have a three-dimensional object, we can talk about the volume now, that would be increased by a factor of 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 cubed, which is 27. So that's scale factors and similarity of shapes.